Good evening. I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order. I'll ask the Honorable Mayor Bobby Hernan to lead us in our prayer. And right from the prayer, we'll go to the pledge. Please stand. As we uh, pray tonight, and uh, as you do at home or during the day, please remember the citizens of France, the back, uh, and remember, of course, always remember our whole world. And then uh, Representative Alan Harper had a uh, medical issue out in Denver on a trip out there. He's hopefully going to be flying back in the next day or so, but please pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to assemble ourselves together and discuss the business of the great city of Northport, Alabama. Thank you for these council people that have been elected to serve. Give them wisdom. Give them guidance. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for letting us live in a country where we can gather together and have these meetings. Be always with our police, our fire, our military. Keep them safe and out of harm's way. We love you and thank you for loving us. These things we ask. Amen. Amen. Attention, salute, pledge. Our I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Collins, call roll, please. Councilman Hayes. Here. Councilman Sullivan. Here. Councilman Sims. Here. President Logan. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. President. Item five is approval of the agenda. Had a very spirited pre-meeting. If you missed it, missed a very spirited pre-meeting. Approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as printed. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sullivan. Comments. Any questions or comments? Um, yes, there, for some reason, um, Mr. Collins has put on the, uh, the agenda that I had requested a resolution, and I have not. Um, I'd be glad to st discuss some issues I have, but uh, there is no resolution printed and up and in our packet at this time. No, you can, um, I can do that, or we can drop it and talk about a resolution at the next meeting. Yes, ma'am. Councilwoman, I want to make sure I'm, I'm speaking on the correct subject matter. We are discussing, or you, you made a mention of, is it the item 10? I think. The one that says resolution, Judy has. Okay. And in the interest of, of conversation, I think, was this requested by you or was it? No, Mr. President, it was not requested by me. However, uh, there is no, as you can see, uh, if, it, if it had been, there would be uh, a draft resolution in our packet. There is none. Okay. Okay. So uh, obviously I did not, and there ha obviously there had been a discussion uh, between myself and Mr. Collins. He just simply put it on the agenda with no basis for it. Yes, ma'am. So are you asking to remove item 10? Well, I don't have an agenda prepared. Does this, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, res a resolution. Does Mr. Collins? Ms. Collins, is there a resolution prepared, I guess, in, in, in response to uh, Councilman President, Hayes? there is not. The conversation I had with Councilman Hayes was the discussion of the matter that you have before you as it is listed. Uh, and that item is listed as um, resolution regarding 2016 and 2017 Kentuck funding. That discussion related to a remaining $200,000, $100,000 in 2016 and 2017, um, as previously discussed by the City Council, to move forward with the budgeting process and the reallocation of those funds. I explained to Councilman Hayes that the reallocation of those funds would be a budgetary item or up for discussion by the City Council, advised her that I would need to put that on the City Council agenda, and that's what I have before you tonight. Okay. Councilman Hayes, did you did you hear uh, Mayor Herndon? He said if we don't have a resolution, if it's okay with you, if you if you would like for this to be omitted, omitted from the agenda. Is that what you want? There is no resolution in our packet. All right. So, I, so I, I, uh, it's a resolutions for everything else on the agenda except the, um, a resolution for what Mr. Collins is talking about. Yes. What I will have, what I will have to say, I will say during my comment section. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So are, are we 
but in the interest of, of my agenda, I need to approve it. But before I approve it, I know I had a motion by Council President Logan, second by Councilman Sullivan, uh, comments by, of course, Honorable Councilman Hayes of District 1. Uh, but I need to know if you want to remove that item, which is item number 10. Well, yes, obviously we can't go forward without a draft resolution. Yes, ma'am. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a motion by Council President Logan, second by Councilman Sullivan, comments by the Honorable Councilwoman Judy Hayes of District 1, also instructing Council to remove item 10, which is a resolution regarding 2016 and 2017 Kentuck funding. And Councilwoman, if I'm making the language correct, you will address it in under your business. Is that right? I, I will address um, an issue or two, but not at this point request a resolution. Yes, ma'am. All right, I'll, I'll, again, I've got the motion. Councilman Sullivan has a second. I want to amend my language to delete item, mm -hmm. item 10, which is a resolution regarding 2016 and 2017 Kentuck funding at the request of Councilwoman Judy Hayes, Honorable Councilwoman from District 1. Any further questions or comments? Hearing now, Mr. Collins. President Logan. Yes. Councilman Sullivan. Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 7, 7A1 under unfinished business. This is a second reading ordering the demolition of an unsafe structure located at 1416 MLK Junior Boulevard. We have three of these, Ms. Gay, and basically there are the second readings of demolitions. What we'll do in these three, ladies and gentlemen, is basically order the demolition, but we will give the, the, the property owner 60 days or the demo to take place after January 15th if the improvements have not been made. Is that right? I'll make a motion to approve the ordinance ordering the demolition of an unsafe structure located at 1416 MLK Junior Boulevard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Motion carries. Second item is a Ordinance ordering the demolition of an unsafe structure located at 1421 MLK Junior Boulevard. Same process, same approach, 60-day extension, no later than January 15th. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sullivan. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Motion carries. Third item is a second reading ordering the demolition of an unsafe structure located at 1426 MLK Junior Boulevard. Again, same process, same approach. Demolition will take place after January 15th if applicant has not done so with the said improvements. I'll make that as a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sullivan. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yeah. Excuse me, yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Motion carries. The fourth item, of course, is a second reading of an ordinance ordering the demolition of an unsafe structure located at 1711 17th Street. Ms. Gay, this is ready to be demoed, no extension requested. Is that right? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sullivan. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. Motion carries. Item 5 is a second reading of an ordinance <coughs> annexing a parcel of land located at 13512 Highway 43 North, Miss Gay. This is the proposed Jack's location. This came with a favorable recommendation from our planning commission. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. That's correct. Do I have a motion to approve that ordinance annexing the parcel of land located at 13512 Highway 43? Move to approve. That's a motion by Councilman Sullivan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. President Logan? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> Item 6 is a second reading of the rezoning of that same parcel located at 13512 Highway 43. Again, this came with a favorable recommendation, of course. Do I have a motion to approve the ordinance rezoning the parcel of land located at 13512 Highway 43 North? Move to approve. That's a motion by Councilman Sullivan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilmember Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. President Logan? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Aiken. 
Uh, do you have any uh, time frame of when that project could get started? Uh, the piece of property we talk about is the new Jack's Hamburgers up on uh, 43. So um, tell Jack's we appreciate them coming very much. Thank you. Item 8B, excuse me, 8A1 is a, under new business, the first reading of an ordinance amending table 4-1 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, Ms. Gay. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. President, this comes also with a favor recommendation from our planning commission, and uh, we're amending table 4-1, which allows the uses in our zoning ordinance, and this will allow uh, commercial, which they're referring to as C2 and C3, to allow on the first floor retail development, second top level multifamily, and it is just for a first reading tonight. Thank you. I'll offer that first reading on 8A1. 8B1 is a resolution awarding bid file 15-13 furnishing janitorial supplies. Before I get into it, ladies and gentlemen, we have about five or six of them. These are yearly bid items, so please bear with us and we'll get through it very quickly. This is a resolution, of course, furnishing janitorial supplies. Ms. Starnes, this is lowest responsible bidder is one source office products. I'll make that motion to authorize the city administrator to approve all purchase requisitions regarding bid file 1513 for one source office products for furnishing janitorial supplies, their second. Second. Thank you, my council member Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan. Yes. Councilman Sims. Yes. Councilman Sullivan. Yes. Councilwoman Hayes. Yes. Motion carries. Second item is a resolution awarding bid file 1517 miscellaneous automotive parts, Ms. Starnes. We went through the bid process and the lowest responsible bidder is Norport Auto Supply. I'll make a motion to authorize the city administrator to approve all purchase requisitions and approve the resolution awarding bid file 1517 to Norport Auto Supply as their second. Second. Thank you, my Councilman Sullivan. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan. Yes. Councilman Sullivan. Yes. Councilwoman Hayes. Yes. Councilman Sims. Yes. Motion carries. Item three is a resolution awarding bid file 1518 oil products. Ms. Starnes, again, the lowest responsible bidder is W.H. Thomas Oil Company. I'll make that as a motion to allow the city administrator's office to approve all purchase requisitions related to 1518 all oil products is the yearly bid to W.H. Thomas Oil Company. Is there a second? Second. Second, yes. my council member Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan. Yes. Councilman Sims. Yes. Councilman Sullivan. Yes. Councilwoman Hayes. Yes. Motion carries. Item four is a resolution authorizing the renewal of an agreement with River Tree Systems, Mr. Collins. Mr. President, members of Council, Mayor Hernan, as you're aware, um, our city conducts audits on various businesses throughout the city throughout the year. Um, River Tree Systems has been our partner for the last several years, and they assist us in including the city of Northport. Um, in recovering funds through audits and audits they do with, on businesses which are typically not located in the city of Norport. It's been a very productive agreement for the city. We simply request that we um, extend this agreement as we do each year um, so that we may have their participation in their audits and recover whatever funds available through the auditing process. Thank you. To have a motion to approve that resolution authorizing the renewal of an agreement with River Tree Systems. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Take my council member Sullivan. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan. Yes. Councilman Sullivan. Yes. Councilman Sims. Yes. Councilwoman Hayes. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item five is a resolution awarding bid file one five one four automotive batteries. Ms. Starnes again. The lowest responsible bidder is Napa Auto Parts. I'll make that motion to request and approve the city administrator to approve all purchase requisitions related to automotive batteries yearly basis for the city of Norport is their second. Second. Thank you, my Councilman Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan. Yes. Councilman Sims. Yes. Councilwoman Hayes. Yes. Councilman Sullivan. Yes. <laughs> Motion carries. Item six is a resolution awarding bid file 1515 heavy duty automotive parts. Ms. Starnes again, lowest responsible bidder is Southland International. I'll make a motion to approve the city administrator's office to approve all necessary purchase requisitions 
regarding heavy duty automotive parts on a yearly basis to the city of Newport for 12 months. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilmember Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Motion carries. Item 7 is a resolution awarding bid file 15 16, light duty automotive parts. Again, the lowest responsible bidder is North Port Auto Supply. I'll make a motion to approve the city administrator's office to approve all necessary purchase requisitions in relation to light duty automotive parts. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sullivan. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. Motion carries. Item 8 is a resolution awarding the Mid-Layer Road Improvement Project, Mr. Collins. Mr. President, members of Council, Mayor Hernan, as you are aware, we've worked for some time on the Mid-Layer Road mm -hmm. Widening Project. Um, that project has been fairly lengthy in its um, proposal. We've now gotten through the process of bidding. The low bidder on the Mid-Layer Widening Project was Ryan Shirley Company in the amount of $6,312,000. Our, our um, request tonight is to ask you to approve uh, that low bid so that we may move forward with that project. Thank you. To have a motion to approve the resolution awarding the bid file for the Mid-Layer Road Improvement Project to Ryan Shirley in the exact amount of $6,312,163.67. Move to approve. That's a motion by Councilman Sullivan. Is there a second? Second. That's a second by Councilman Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. President Logan? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Item 9 mm -hmm. is a resolution awarding bid file 15 30 under re street resurfacing. Mr. Swan. Mayor, members of council, we opened bids on our annual resurfacing project on November 12th. Uh, we had a, t a total of two bids we'll receive. Attached in your packet is a bid tabulation of those bids. The lowest bidder was Mallory Buckhalter Paving in the amount of $367,694. We're recommending that you award the bid to the low bidder. As a matter of information, uh, our estimate was within was within uh, fifteen thousand dollars of that of that bid, so we feel like we've gotten some good prices. Thank you. I'll make that motion, approving the or awarding the bid file fifteen thirty street resurfacing to Mallory Burkhalter paving in the amount of three hundred sixty seven thousand six hundred eighty four dollars and zero cents, and authorizing the city administrator to execute all purchase order requisitions. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Hayes. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Abstain. Motion carries, Mr. President. Item 10, of course, has been deleted at the request of Councilwoman Hayes, but I do have two, two citizens to speak. And if it's, if it's okay, with please, as uh, Mayor and members of Council, Ms. Amy Eccles and Ms. Santonia Stevens, if you guys want to come up and just speak on speak on that anyway I know you guys came up and we appreciate it this is in relation to item 8b10 are you kidding I love to talk about Ken Tuck <laughs> and I um, appreciate it being on the agenda anyway because I just want to um, review real quickly what Northport City Council has done for us when our building was uninhabitable and we started a capital campaign the board said, unless Northport gets behind you, we're not doing it. So we would go to other people in the community and they're like, what is Northport doing? So you guys have actually enabled us to get a million dollars in pledges for reconstructing that nearly 100 year old building. And historically speaking, I don't know when, um, when the Northport City Council Tuscaloosa City Council and the Tuscaloosa County Commission, they were so happy to support what you guys started when we told them about your support, then they wanted to get on board, and all three are working so well together. Now, as most of you know, when you buy a new house, you have to finance it. So we do have a loan that we're servicing debt because the pledges are over 
three years. We have already collected 500,000, which to me is just incredible, but we still have that much and more to pay. So um, that's sort of an update on that. Plus we had to, like someone told me when we started, you're gonna have things you don't know about. So the building we vacated has to have minimal rehabilitation in order to get our programming and studios and classes back into that. So um, I just want you to know that we appreciate all you do. We bring the festival to Northport every year. We do 12 art nights a year. That last art night we had 250 in downtown Northport to a free event. We do that every single month and we make this $5 million economic impact in your community because of the wonderful support that you guys give us. And we are so excited to be back on the corner. Um, we still are campaigning and working for pledges and working on paying off that debt. But on behalf of Kentuck, I just want to truly thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It's going well. So thank you for giving me that thank opportunity. You. Thank you, Amy. Um, I will move on to item number 11. Any other member of Kentuck Board want to speak? I want to make sure I, before I move on. We're okay? Okay. Item 11, courses of resolution authorizing the city administrator to enter into an agreement with Dr. Crawford under Chief Marshall's business, but I know I spoke with Chief Marshall in the pre-meeting. This is just a previously approved uh, budgetary item. This is a yearly thing that we do. This is regarding uh, some services that Dr. Crawford uh, actually offers. Is that right, Mr. Collins? Yes, Mr. President, that is correct. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Second my council member Sullivan. <coughs> Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. Mr. President, or President Logan. Yes. Councilman Sullivan. Yes. Councilwoman Hayes. Yes. Councilman Sims. Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Item 12 is a resolution authorizing the city administrator to execute an agreement with BKI, Mr. Collins. Mr. President, members of council, Mayor Herndon, uh, as you're aware, uh, recently the three cent um, countywide sales tax was adopted by the state legislature um, that created a Tuscus County Transportation Authority. Included in the Tuscus County Transportation Authority was a list of items that would make improvements to the Highway 69 North Corridor. One of those intersections to be improved is the intersection of Charlie Shirley Road at Highway 69. Um, the funding for these projects is expected to take place or be provided through a bond issue to be executed in July of 2016 for uh, all of the projects countywide included on the list. What we have before you tonight is a request to retain BKI, Burke Klein Peter engineers as the engineer of record for the city of Northport on the reconfiguration or improvements to the intersection of Charlie Shirley Road at Highway 69. So we may be prepared to move forward with that project when those funds are available. The, any funds expended by the city during this process will be refunded to the city through the bond issue and the actual improvements to the intersection will be funded through the Trans Tuscus County Transportation Authority bond issue. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve that resolution authorizing our city administrator's office to execute the agreement with BKI for Charlie Shirley and Highway 69 improvement? Move to approve. That's a motion by Councilmember Sullivan. Second. Second by Councilmember Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. President Logan. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item C is our consent agenda. We have eight items. They range from minutes mm -hmm. of the previous meeting, bill listings and travel and training for various employees and appeal requisition. Of course, our annual agreement with Hawk out of utilities, Doran Associates. That's uh, some legal legal matters out of Mr. Davis's office and our PD, of course, with some hats and out of carrier vests at a specified amount. These are all in our 2015 budget. Do I have a motion to approve this consent agenda with these eight items listed? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank my council member Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Item nine, reports of special committees to council. We have none to report. Item 10, public hearings. We have none on the agenda. 
Item 11, City Administrator's Business, Mr. Collins. Mr. President, two items for you tonight. They involve scheduling of the meetings of the City Council. The first we have before you tonight um, is for discussion uh, and then any action the Council may choose to take. The Currently, the scheduled meetings for the City Council for the month of December are Monday, December 7, and Monday, December 21. The Monday, December 7 date is also the date of the Christmas Christmas parade in downtown Tuscaloosa. <coughs> Typically, the city council moves that meeting so that our elected officials and staff may be able to participate in that parade. That would leave the remaining meeting in December of December 21. We also understand that given that that's the week of Christmas, there may, may be some out of town travel or inability to obtain a quorum for that night. So what we have for your discussion tonight is to move the December 7 meeting to Monday, December 14, and December 14 be the only meeting of the city council in the month of December. That is that is our discussion. That's obviously up for consideration by the city council. The second item I have for you is the meetings in January. Right now, the meetings in January are Monday, January 1, and Monday, January 18. January 18 is the Martin Luther King Jr. National Holiday. We would request that the January 18 meeting be moved one day to January 19. Again, to recap, December meetings, the request is to have one meeting on December 14. In the January meetings, the meetings would be Monday, January 4, and Tuesday, January 19. Thank you, Scott. Do I have a motion to approve the request from City Administrator's Office to move the December meeting for one meeting, which is December 14th? Same times will apply pre meeting at 5, general meeting at 6, and then January 4th same time will apply and january 19th same time will apply i have a motion to approve that request i'm moved thank you that's a motion by council member sims i'll make that second any questions or comments regarding the dates to be requested now let me ask you a question did you say that we were going to just meet once in december and that's on the 14th yes yes ma'am um i think what Scott was explaining, I think if the 21st is a conflict with council members because of holiday travel for what, whatever reason, we could just have one meeting in December, okay. if that's feasible. I'll make sure I'm yes, ma'am. Mr. President, as a point of reference, just so <coughs> we're clear on, on this, under the Alabama Code, municipalities would normally have, or, or Norfolk under the Alabama Code would typically have two meetings of the, of the month unless a quorum cannot be obtained. Um, it, the information we have now is that likely a quorum will not be available for the 21st. Rather than maintain that schedule and not have a quorum at the time, the request is simply to have one meeting on the 14th when we are aware that we would have a quorum for at least one meeting during the month of December. Thank you. And I, I still have your motion. That's just a point of clarification. Thank you. Motion by President Logan, second by Council Member Sims. Had a question by uh, Honorable Councilwoman Judy Hayes, District 1. Of course, we had clarification by Scott Collins. So again, we have a motion second. Any further uh, discussions or comments? Hearing numbers to Collins. Councilman Sims? Yes. President Logan? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 12 is departmental business. We have two items under our PD. <coughs> uh, Chief Burton, we have one, actually two ABC license requests uh, for Saman One LLC doing business as Norport Chevron Chief. This is a new new license or excuse me a transfer uh, new owner uh, can you give me the address that way I can kind of write it for record this is a uh, 501 Bridge Avenue thank you everything checked out as well is that right uh, there were no issues in the background though. <coughs> no. thank you I'll make that motion to approve the ABC license for Saman one LLC doing businesses Norport Chevron at 501 Bridge Avenue is their second, second. Uh, thank yep. my councilman Sullivan any questions or comments? Hearing now, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilwoman Hayes? Yes. Motion carried. Second is a ABC license for Express Mart LLC doing business as Express Mart 3. Again, this is a new owner transfer, transfer of a, of a license. Again, Chief, what's the address and do we have any issues? I have no issues with it. Also, uh, the address is 1325 Lurleen Wallace. Thank you. I'll make that motion to approve the ABC license for Express Mart LLC doing business as Express Mart 3. Is there a second? 
Second. Second by Councilman Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan. Yes. Councilman Sims. Yes. Councilwoman Hayes. Yes. Councilman Sullivan. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 13 <laughs> is public comment. We have a few citizens signed up to speak. I'll start with Ms. Uh, Sally Wells. Please state your name and address for the record, Ms. Sally. My name is Sally Wells. I live at 1009 Main Avenue in Northport. And good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you very much uh, for letting me speak tonight. I'm here, I guess, on behalf of myself and my husband. Um, I emailed each one of you. I hope you received that and were able to read it. Um, over the weekend, I emailed it. Um, but what I'm here about is um, I would like to say that we are in favor of keeping the green space where uh, the Heritage Museum resides at presently along with the schoolhouse as well as the park and para. And in my email to y'all I said, you know, I know that Ms. Hayes lives in our area, um, but I don't think the rest of you do. I, I don't know because I don't know where you live. Um, however, um, what's important to myself and my husband is we moved here from Virginia 10 years ago to restore a family home. My family, the Hardin family, has been in Northport since the late 1800s. And so what drew us to this area was the charm and the historical background of Northport and of course family ties. And part of that green space that we have there, what makes it so attractive is that is a welcoming part of the older section, what I want to call the older section of Northport. We have the newer section of Northport that has great businesses and lots of restaurants and things for other people to do. But what the draw to Northport is, is the quaintness, quaintness of the downtown area. And we have Kentuck Park, which is great, and it has some facilities there for people to use. But the space that is at the corner of Lurleen and Park is very important to the neighborhood and the residents of those neighborhoods, Bellwood, Main Avenue, which is a historical district, our house is historical. So I would like to highly encourage y'all to take that into consideration when you're looking at possibly leasing commercial space to whatever is going to go in there. We've heard lots of rumors what may go in there. Um, and I hope you will take into consideration the residents that live around the park and that use the park and that would like to keep it as a welcoming part of downtown Northport. So that's basically what I wanted to say tonight. I appreciate um, Amy Lapard and organizing and making sure that Northport residents are kept abreast of things, but I really would like for y'all to think about if, if you lived near that park, would you want that space taken away and used for a commercial, possibly fast food business in your backyard? Is that what you would want for your family and for your house? And if the answer is no, then I think if the Heritage Museum wants to move somewhere else, that's fine. However, take that piece of property and still use it as a green, spe green space. Um, add on to the park where children can play, where families can gather and have socials. Keep, I know that the building of Para and uh, the park is supposed, the place, playground is supposed to remain, but that other green space that is there could be used for the citizens that live in that area as, as green space for them to utilize as well. So I hope you will really take into consideration what the residents of that part of Northport would like and not take into consideration just how it could be another commercial piece of property when there may be 
other commercial property that y'all have that could be utilized for, excuse me, for something of the fast food nature. So thank you very much for your time and I hope you will take that into consideration. Thank you. Second citizen, second citizen, Torn Alter, Alter. Mr. Alter, thank you for coming. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you for letting me speak. My name is Torn Alter. I live at 1314 21st Avenue in Northport. That's a spoke off the Bellwood Circle. So I'm one of the uh, residents that uh, Ms. Wells is referring to. My, I, I simply want to, and I'll be brief, uh, echo the comments of the last speaker. Um, I've been living uh, in my house for about 15 years, and um, my eight-year-old twins, Irving and Dora, uh, have been playing in that park since they were born. I, we, that's their first park. We were there yesterday. We go all the time. We don't just play with people who live in the neighborhood. People drive from all over the, all over the area to the park. We play with people from all, all walks of life. And when I told them that there might be a Krispy Kreme or some some uh, commercial business there where the where the museum is that they they looked at me and, and there had tears in their eyes and they, they thought this was inconceivable and to me it, it would it, I believe this would ruin the park it, um, it would be it, it would create serious problems for my neighborhood um, and uh, I think it's it's a it's a wonderful wonderful thing we have there please. I ask you, don't ruin this. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Jody Jobson. Thank you for coming, Mr. Jobson. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Jody Jobson. I live at 1534 Bellwood Lane in Northport. And on the light side, I would like to ask that your email addresses of all the council administrators put on online. We looked it up today and we couldn't find an email address. Uh, that was actually be that that's being fixed too. Okay. And I'm glad. I think it was two more citizens actually raised that concern, so we actually going to get that fixed. We want to be available, so we're going to get that fixed. So. All right, sir. My next my next part of my little talk is for Mr. Davis wherever he is. Ron Davis, can you tell me what dedicated means as far as the city? Dedicated funds or dedicated? Do what? I don't want legal advice. I just <coughs> want to know what the definition of a dedicated is. In other words, if, if these gentlemen or any councilman council funds a project and dedicates those funds for a certain use can it be changed without a vote okay all right that answered that one uh, have has anyone got a site survey of that property do you have one mr. Collins yes could I get a copy of it? I believe you could. I believe the survey would be public record. Okay. Is that site survey for just the front part of that or what What you're calling not the park, but or is it for the whole five acres that it's was the, there? It's the entire city-owned property. You don't, you don't have a way to survey a, a piece of your property, so it's just a survey but for the But somebody entire. split it in half at a different zoning meeting. So I, that my question, I'm not trying it's to. It's a survey of the entire city-owned property. Okay, so that's the whole five acres. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. To, to bring you up to snuff just a little bit, <clears throat> city of Northport years ago bought that five acres with city citizens contributions for a city park. At the same time they bought that land for a city park, they established Northport Park and Recreation Board. 
at that time they funded the Northport City, I mean the Northport Park and Recreation Board to run that park. Now the different the definition of the park that I'm talking about is from end to end, the whole five acres which the state's taken some of it. In in nineteen fifty three, well, excuse me, a little little before then the citizens of Northport and the council were worried about a place for the kids. They already had the park, but they wanted to get them off the street. So by civic organizations, the Northport Civic Club, the Southern Culture Club, the Pilot Club of Northport, and a lot of other civic organizations funded money with the city of Northport and built that community center down there. In 1953, the key was handed to the city park, uh, whoever was the chairman. There's nowhere that I found that that's been changed in any way other than that is a dedicated city park paid for with city funds and individual funds. Now, I'm not a lawyer. Mr. Davis is the lawyer over there. But it's my understanding that if city funds and private and ind individual funds were used to buy that land for a city park, if you're going to change it, then y'all need to pay the heirs of the people that donated their money back plus interest. And that goes back a long way. All we're trying to do is to save the park. Whether you want to put a Krispy Kreme on there, which, by the way, is not going to happen. Or if you want to put a, a, another Jacks, or if you want to put apartments, we're asking you: Is your talk is the tax money, or the money you get off of that particular development, worth what it's going to cost the citizens of, of Northport that that voted for each and every one of you? Now. I just don't think y'all are that kind of men. I think either, somewhere down there there's a heart, and somewhere down there there's reasoning. Well, now, this is the only place these people have got. As you've heard people say, you've got people coming from miles around to that one particular park. We don't have a Bobby Miller Center. We don't have a Fawcett Brothers. We don't have a Phelps Center. We don't have a Maccabee Center. We have the Northport Community Center, and yet we... Get, it's the most profitable building that the Paris got, and y'all are wanting to destroy it. Y'all are, are trying to take our kids' uh, play area, my grandkids and everybody else's, and turn it into a revenue. Now, whether you believe me or whether you don't, that piece of property will not, cannot, be used for anything but a park because there's a creek running through it. Here's the picture of the downtown 1924 quadru quad <laughs> never mind, quadrangle map, downtown Northport. The, tw the creek comes off of 20th Avenue and runs straight under the uh, historic museum building. The city knows about it because somebody before y'all dug it down 15 feet and put red clay in it so it wouldn't shift and then put the building on that particular property. Here's the 1951 showing the same creek at the same place. So it hadn't moved. And I, I'm, not, I'm not as well versed as most of you, but I don't think you can move a creek without getting the Corps of Engineers. And that creek runs all the way to the Black Warrior River down there. So I'm asking you to take take time, and when you go to leave this meeting or you go to another meeting, you think about it. You think real hard and put it in your heart. Do you want to destroy that park down there for your future citizens? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jody. Miss Amy Lepard, come on down. Miss Amy Lepard, 
Please state your name and address for the record. Thanks for coming. My name is Amy Lapard. <coughs> My address is 2315 7th Street, Northport. As all of our elected <coughs> officials and city officials are aware, the citizens of the city of Northport brought forward a formal proposal on November 2nd at the pre-meeting pre and city council meeting to have the city of Northport recognize and dedicate the land surrounding the Northport Community Center Northport Heritage Museum, Park, and Playground as a dedicated community park and open space greenbelt. We've also submitted the park dedication proposal to our elected officials and city officials by email and through the city's website contact form, left voicemails on the city's <coughs> phone number. Um, and we've reached out to the city council members, the mayor, and city administrator, again by phone, email, and hand-delivered proposals, but have not yet been granted a first reading as part of a city council meeting agenda. So we're back tonight to ask our elected officials to dedicate the park as outlined in this proposal. We, the citizens of the city of Northport, propose that the city of Northport recognize and dedicate the land surrounding the Northport Community Center, playground, park, and current site of the Northport, Northport Heritage Museum as a dedicated community park, open space greenbelt, protected from future development for the continued use and good of the community. We propose that the land at the convergence of Park Street and Lurling Wallace Boulevard, Alabama Highway 69, owned by the city of Northport, remain as a city-owned and dedicated community park, open space greenbelt, as a welcoming and inviting entry point into the city for use in par as park and recreation land by citizens and visitors. A community park is a larger park designed for use by the residents of the entire city. A community park will have various general use facilities, including playground equipment, picnic areas and shelters, and or other special use facilities. Open space is an open piece of land that provides development breaks and is accessible to the public. Open space can include green space land that is partly or completely covered with grass, trees, shrubs, or other vegetation. Green belts are an open area of land around a city on which building is restricted. We, the citizens of the city of Northport, propose that the current site of the Northport Heritage Museum be dedicated as the permanent home of the Northport Heritage Museum to remain as it is today as a welcome entry point into our city, representing the city of Northport's history, heritage, and identity. We, the citizens of the city of Northport, have an interest in smart growth for our city, and that includes preserving open spaces where we can meet and greet our neighbors, where we can raise our children, and where we can come together to have community. That's the proposal that we brought to you two weeks ago. It's the same proposal that we bring back tonight, accompanied by um, 383 signatures on a petition with the exact same proposal attached. And I just, you know, 383 is a significant number of signatures in a city of our size. And 70% of those are citizens of the city of Northport. The other signatures are people who grew up here, people who own businesses here but reside in Tuscaloosa, people who drive over from Gordo to let their children play in that park. The other people on, that sign on those signatures may not be able to vote for you, but they spend their dollars in our city and they play with our children. They are an important part of our community as well. So I wanna share because saying 383 signatures, that's a lot of signatures, but uh, that also includes 48 pages of comments as well as signatures. And I wanna share those tonight so that you hear the voices of the citizens of the city of Northport, the people who do care about this, that it's not just a formal proposal, it's people's history, it's their backyard, it's their memories and their stories. So hey, I, 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 I didn't want to interrupt. Can I have a copy of that, that way I can? Absolutely. And, and when you say. I do have a copy for all the council. Okay. Yeah. And also, um, you were, your city official email addresses were added to the petition so that you should be receiving a message every time someone signs and leaves a comment. You should receive an individual email with each signature and each comment. 
um, but I have a printed copy as well for you. But I do want to share some of these so that you get a sense of some of the people who care deeply about this. Northport is the city of my birth, rearing, elementary, junior high, and high school education, and where my heart is. And some of these I'm going to abbreviate just for the sake of time. While I live in Tuscaloosa, we own a house and additional land in Northport. I remember well going to the community center each Friday night following the football games in the 1950s where there were all types of activities from dancing to singing by various students and doing the bunny hop with the high school students at the, as the only elementary student there. As a high school student, I attended many of the dances after the game. I checked out books from the library branch in the community center. Our Boy Scout hut was located in the general area of the museum. We went to Little League and played baseball games there, along with tennis on the community center. The TCH class of 1964 has held a reunion meeting there, and the TCHS alumni board have had many meetings in the museum, as well as reunion planning and meetings, along with n numerous other board and civic meetings in the museum. This is from another signature. We certainly don't need to lose the community center, the heritage museum, or the playground. These areas need to be protected because once they are gone, they'll be gone for good. I would like to see the Northport Heritage Museum along with the park, playground, and the land surrounding it. This is a beautiful landmark that should not be disturbed by any development. Our family regularly walks to this park where our children play. Having a park with a playground within walking distance was our primary reason for selecting housing in downtown Northport. This is the best place to live in Northport for a somewhat pedestrian lifestyle. It would be short-sighted to remove it. I grew up in the Palmer House behind the community center, as did my brother and mom. The community center, park, and open fields were a place I visited daily for recreational purposes. Although I do not live in Northport currently, I do intend to return one day. After living and owning real estate in seven, in seven different states in my life, I realize that Northport and Tuscaloosa are lacking in the number and quality of its parks. If it wants to add value, it needs to keep the city more desirable. Selling the community center or leasing park is short-sighted and a step in the wrong direction. And there, like I said, there are 48 pages of comments that are like that. I just selected a few so that you could hear the voices rather than just hearing 383 signatures. So what I ask tonight is that we have a dialogue about this. We'd like to have a first reading of this proposal be a part of a future council meeting. And I hope that we'll get some response um, from our officials in regard to this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> you that was not for you. <coughs> wah wah, I'm joking. Uh, how you doing? How you feeling? Pretty good, pretty good. Good. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, Kenneth Walters, I live at Stewart Park here in Northport. Uh, the reason <coughs> I'm going to get up and uh, say a few words tonight, of course, I come to all the council meetings a good bit and everything. And of course, I've been a citizen here, I guess, for about the last going on uh, four years. And of course, uh, you know, I brought it up before one time. And of course, it seems like this park has got more uh, attention than the school system and everything else. And of course, y'all do remember several years ago, I brought it up that I would like to see this council change the form of government here. And I know a lot of people get mad at the, at the at, uh, administrator because he's the administrator. And if we could get our citizens this involved in changing our form of government, like the city of Tuscaloosa, where you've got the mayor form council government like they got, then the mayor would be totally responsible for this city. And I just wanted to share that with all these people here because if we could get y'all certainly involved in that direction, we could change the form of government we have over here. So I just wanted to share that with y'all and everything. But it seems like everybody's on the same page. They don't want the park disrupted over here, and it probably won't be. But that's all I've got to say. It looks like everybody's in kind of a love mode tonight here tonight, and that's good. So uh, that's just want to share with that because I would like to see us one day change the form of government here. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
That is all the citizens I have signed for tonight. I move right into mayor and council members business. I'll start with the honorable councilwoman Judy Hayes from district one councilwoman. Beckles, I'd like to thank you for coming and discussing with us the progress that you've made with Kentuck, the Kentuck Museum and Art Center. Um, I think it's great. It looks great from the outside. I haven't been in inside yet. And I want you to know that uh, my grandchildren have taken cl uh, classes in the summer here. The, they particularly like the pottery class. And, uh, and I go to art night, not every time, but uh, certainly four or five times or more, more than that each year. And it's, if you've never been to art night at Kentuck, you're really missing something special. Uh, from the uh, clay oven uh, pot <laughs> pizza, which is delicious, to uh, the music, uh, that uh, musical groups that you, you schedule and plan, they're, they're, they're perfect. They have the right kind of sound and it, they provide um, a, a good dimension to art night. And then of course, it's, it's always nice to get together and see your neighbors and friends that you might not have been able to speak to in a while. Um, and there's many other, oh yes, one more I would uh, mention is that the exhibits that you have, the children's, art and exhibits are, are really nice and I've actually bidded on several and auctions and, and won. <laughs> so they're sitting out, um, in my house. Um, I, I just think it's great that you're re rehabbing and the building and uh, not remodeling it but rehabbing it so that it will, it will remain, uh, it will keep its historic significance which is important to us in our area. I want, I, when I brought this up at the pre-council meeting. Essentially what I was asking for, since we've given the Kentuck, given to the Kentuck uh, Museum for uh, rehabilitation, and, and that involves everything a lot, I know that you've done and plan to do, that I felt like, since, I feel like since it's taxpayer money, if we could just have an annual report, um, account, just an, an annual report, accounting report, it doesn't have to be done by an accountant, can just write down the money that you received and uh, from Northport that's that's uh, and um, and and turn it into the council so that if any if anybody has any questions we can say this is what they're doing with the money and I don't you know I hope that you'll agree with me that I that that's a reasonable request and um, and, and just just su submit it and uh, I'm sure to, to our mayor or pre uh, council president or to mr. Collins to um, pass out to us and just so we'll have that for our information. Thank you for all you do. Looking forward to uh, the completion. I'll be at the next, well, I guess, will Dickens take the place of the next art night? No, okay, so we've got two events then uh, coming up in December, so that's, that's even better. But thank you again and your staff for all you have done to um, rehab the Kentucky Museum and really make it a, a, a really a shining star now in, in downtown Northport. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, under my business, again, thanks everybody for coming out. You see city government hard at work, so we really appreciate everybody coming out and voicing concerns uh, in a way that council can kind of take them and digest them and make some reasonable decisions. Uh, I want also, yes, ma'am. I didn't get into the first meeting over there to sign my name to speak. Yes, ma'am. Please so, state your name and address oh, for record. I'm my sorry. Name state is, my name is Dolly Miller, and I'm a resident of Harper Road in, here in Northport. Mm -hmm. And I don't know much about the park because I don't have any children that I can take over there, but I know it's a good place to be. But on the issue of the community center, I speak for a whole bunch of us over there. We've had a very disturbing weekend from a, all the kind of things being solicited and all that kind of stuff and gossip included that they were gonna tear the community center down and build apartments and therefore we were gonna have to move the dancing. Now I wanna know where that rumor came from. I don't know, they got a rumor mill. I, <laughs> I have no I, idea. I would <laughs> like to know where it came from because <laughs> it's got a whole bunch of us old folks stirred up. Well, I don't want to make my senior community upset, but I, I really don't know where that, that room will come from. Does anybody in this room know? Mama, I don't know. You don't? Well, I'll sit down. This, this is my mother. 
<laughs> you see where he gets his funk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But that is a legitimate question, and I'd like an answer to tell you the truth, because I'd like to kick some butt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. <laughs> so, is it just a rumor? I, I'm afraid to answer, but, but <laughs> as far as I know, it's just a rumor. Yes, I, yes I, I can assure you with 100% certainty, it's a rumor. I have no clue where it started, no clue right. where it came from, and I wish I could give you more than that. That's all we need. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Mayor and Council. Just like we planned it. You see, you didn't want to get on there. We got him, didn't we? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> I want to, uh, one, thank everybody, of course, and the young lady just stood up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I want to, I hope everybody has a blessed Thanksgiving. If I don't see you guys with your family and friends, I, I just want to say that I think everybody's got an opportunity and a reason to be blessed and and just really give thanks for what we have and in, in, in this great country we have. So I want to ask everybody to have a blessed Thanksgiving from my family to you guys. So, And also thank Kentuck for coming. You guys do a great job. I'm, I'm very proud of the building. I'm very proud of the improvements that have been made. It's a, it's a joint effort that a lot of hands and a lot of hard work, we brought it home, and I'm really glad to kind of be a partner with Kentuck on that one. So thank you, Amy, and your board for that one. And that's all I have under my business. Uh, District 3, Councilman Sullivan. Just one announcement. Um, Friday, December 11th is our third annual 5K. It was the night before Christmas run. Um, I'm sure you've heard me talk about it if you've been here before. Um, it's a great event. Um, all the proceeds go to local DHR to their Christmas gift fund. It's able to help local children right here in Tuscaloosa County. Um, it's a big deal to me, and I really appreciate all the support we've had so far. So um, please feel free to sign up. If you don't want to sign up and run, uh, we gladly take donations as well. So just keep that on your mind. That's December 11th, 7 p.m. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Sims, District 4. Thank you. <coughs> Councilman Harper, of course, is not here tonight. Uh, the Honorable Mayor Bobby Herndon. Uh, <coughs> thank you very much. Um, Joey, Joey. If, if you will, any paperwork or documentation that you have as far as the history of that, if you'll get that. Uh, okay. Um, December 1st, of course, is Dickens downtown. I always have a, a big turnout. Uh, this year, uh, at the request of some of the local high school bands, we're going to have a parade that starts at Kentuck, uh, Kentuck Park, and at 4.15, we'll be over about 4.45 before Dickens even starts. It'll come up 5th Street and end at downtown. Uh, so there'll be more people in downtown, uh, something a lot of the bands, the Tuscaloosa Christmas Parade is getting so large, it's three and four hours long, and they ask if we could have a parade, but uh, next year we'll probably have it on a different night than, than the Dickens thing, so we can get more people back downtown on, on different nights, but uh, I know the local bands right here are really looking forward to it. Um, I also want to recognize a journalism class from the University of Alabama back there. We're always glad to have students here. and. Uh, observing and, and taking notes of how and how not to run a government, but we appreciate that. Uh, very much appreciate y'all being here. Um, I want to offer some congratulations to Carroll Creek Volunteer Fire Department. I, I took part in the groundbreaking today of their new big station on uh, um, Larry Lake Road there at Fire Tower, uh, Firehouse Road or whatever it is, but uh, they're close partners with uh, the city of Northport and our fire department, and they do a great job in the community. Mr. Collins was talking about the transportation committee, about the new projects coming up along Highway 69 North. Well, here a few months ago when the state legislature redid the three cent sales tax, or the two cent sales tax and the one cent education tax, it created the transportation authority, which is gonna allow us to do projects a whole lot, road projects a whole lot faster than we ever have before. And uh, as being a member of that transportation board, it looks like within the next three to four years, all the intersections, the major intersections along Highway 69 will be finished. 
you know, that, that was not, not even in the planning stages. Mid Larry Road is going to be finished, I think it's next August, Mr. Collins, isn't that the deadline on that? Yes, sir, that's correct. Uh, but there, we have funds available with matching state funds that we can jump on projects. We're going to have them ready to help uh, make the traffic flow uh, smoother in different locations of the city, and it's, it's, that's a great thing. Um, let's see. That's, I think that's all I got. Mama, thank you for being here. <laughs> I felt the rage. Is it okay if we adjourn, Mama? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Item 15, we are under adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sullivan. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. All opposed, same sign. We are adjourned, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs>